This video will give you instruction on how to balance chemical equations. We're going to do part one together, so fill this out along with me in the video, and then part two is for you to practice on your own. First, we'll start with reading our equation. Potassium sulfate reacts with strontium chloride to produce strontium sulfate and potassium chloride. I'm gonna take a moment and I'm going to write those in the boxes on the top where it says salt. You do the same. All right, done with the first part. It's helpful to highlight or underline the salts in the phrase. So that's our first part. Next step is to draw the bubble pictures, the ionic pictures, for each of the salts. So let's go through that together. Start with potassium. If you look on your periodic table, potassium has a plus one charge and sulfate has a two minus charge. In order to make this salt formula net charge equal zero, we will need two potassiums for every one sulfate. Take a minute here to pause the video and you fill in the salt pictures for the rest of the salts and then I'll put the answers up and you can check and make sure that you know what you're doing. All right, here are the salts. This is what you should have. Strontium chloride has one strontium and two chlorines. Strontium sulfate is a one-to-one, -one, and so is potassium chloride based on their charges. Next, we write the salt formulas. Potassium has two in the formula, one SO4, no parentheses needed. Strontium chloride, one strontium, two chlorines. Strontium sulfate, it's a one-to-one. -one. And potassium chloride, also a one-to-one. -one. Okay, so we've got the salt formulas all complete. Next step is to add the plus signs and the arrow where appropriate to link our salts in our sentence. Anywhere where you see a reacts with, or an and, or is mixed with, that's gonna be a plus. I'm putting together potassium sulfate and strontium chloride. And I'm also on the other side producing strontium sulfate and potassium chloride. So those go in between here. To divide the two sides, we need an arrow. Anywhere where you see produces, yields, makes, that would be an arrow. That divides the reactants, everything over here. These are called reactants. From the products, which are on this side. Everything on this side is a product. And that arrow divides the two. Next step is to balance the chemical equation. What does that mean? A chemical equation is a representation of what happens on a molecular level. And in doing so, we must make sure that we are conserving matter. That means anything that you put into the reaction must also be represented on the product side. Looking at your pictures, do you see anything that is not following this rule? You should have identified that there are more potassium ions and chlorine ions on the reactant side than there are on the product side. Thus, we must balance using coefficients. Coefficients are large numbers that go directly in front of the salts in the chemical equation. Unlike subscripts that only apply to the atom that is right before it, coefficients apply to the entire salt. To balance this chemical equation, we need more potassium chloride on the product side to match the amount of potassium chloride that we are putting into the reaction. The proper way to do this is to add a coefficient. Writing K2Cl2 is not the same as the salt formula. You must write salt formula first before you do any balancing. And salt formulas should purely come from the name, not from what you had on the reactant side. The proper way to balance this chemical equation is to put a two in front of the potassium chloride. And what it's communicating is that I create two of these. Here they are. Now you can see that the ions that I start with is the same amount of ions that I end with. They've just been rearranged into new salts. The next step is to write my chemical equation out 
If there is no number, it's assumed it's a one and you don't need to write that. Last step is to put the phase of matter. If a chemical reaction is occurring, then all of the reactants must have been aqueous to start. In salt reactions, the reaction can only happen if the ions are free to rearrange. So this has to be broken apart and this has to be broken apart so they can rearrange. Insoluble salts will not break apart, thus they will not react with other salt solutions. That means both of our reactants are aqueous. And then we come to our products, and in order to know what the solubility of our products are, we have to look at the solubility chart on the back of your periodic table. Here we have your periodic table, and on the back you'll find the solubility chart. The way you use this is to find the cation, which is the positive ion, and the anion that matches it, find where they intersect, and then decipher the letter that is in there. We are first looking for strontium sulfate. So I find strontium, and I find sulfate, and I see the letter is N, and I go down to my key down here, and N means no. If you add water, it will not dissolve. It is insoluble. And we're also looking for potassium chloride, which is right here. Yes, soluble. We take that information over to our other sheet and we can properly fill in the phase of matter. Strontium sulfate is going to be solid. If you look at it in a beaker, you make a solid, it'll collect at the bottom in a salt you can see. Potassium chloride is gonna be floating around in solution. You won't be able to see it. That's what aqueous means. And that, is your balanced chemical equation. You now need to do part two on your own to practice. Good luck.